the Chattanooga region is one of several parts of the, of the South, which could be said to be at the time another South or an other South. This was a region of divided um, sentiment. There was a growing industrial base here in the late antebellum period. So when the southern states, first the deep south states or the Gulf um, southern states, decided to leave the Union to make their bid for independence and then were joined in the spring by the upper south states, including uh, Tennessee, this region was one where the national divisions played out on a local area. The population here was very split, very divided over whether or not to stay in the Union to protect Southern rights or to depart the United States, to depart the Union, to depart the constitutional protections and make a bid for the protection of Southern rights by forming a new separate uh, nation, the Confederate States of America. Uh, there literally were troops raised from here on both sides. Chattanooga was important from the beginning of the war on uh, because of the intersection of the railroads here. Um, the, the rail, um, there were four rail companies operating on three rail lines um, connect or intersect here at Chattanooga. Um, they do that to take advantage of the naturally occurring mountain gaps, passes, and corridors, which allow passage in whole or in part over beyond or through the Appalachian Mountains here near the southern end of that great mountain chain. Um, and so Chattanooga was important from the very beginning of the war, initially because so many southern soldiers going to fight for southern independence passed through Chattanooga on the way to what they described as the seat of war or the early seats of war somewhere in northern Virginia or along the Kentucky and Tennessee border. But Chattanooga's importance increased as the war lengthened as well because the new Confederate nation realized that if they were going to be successful in winning their independence and maintaining that independence, they had to develop the military industrial capacity to produce the war materiel their soldiers needed to fight and win that independence. And that military industrial base that the new nation goes to create is located in central Georgia and central Alabama. As that military industrial complex grew in capacity, Chattanooga became more important as a Union target because it was the doorway, the gateway, the passageway through the mountain barrier that in Union hands could then allow a Union army to thrust into that industrial heartland. The Union um, advanced out of Middle Tennessee, having earlier uh, driven southward essentially from Louisville to Nashville. Um, now they are thrusting on towards Chattanooga. They advance from the northwest from Middle Tennessee, coming in over the mountains to the northwest of Chattanooga on a broad front and literally by faint deception and maneuver, um, by threatening to climb over the mountains to the southwest of Chattanooga. They, they forced the Confederates in early September of 1863 to abandon the city of Chattanooga. The, a small Union uh, force then occupies the city to garrison it, and the two main armies then meet in the largest, bloodiest conflict of the campaign, the Battle of Chickamauga, fought about a dozen miles to the south of Chattanooga um, in the valley of West Chickamauga Creek on September 18, 19, and 20, 1863. The Union Army is defeated in that battle, but while they are defeated, they are able to withdraw into um, uh, Chattanooga. There they fortify themselves within a one square mile area in the bend of the Tennessee River and await the arrival of reinforcements. While the Confederates attempted to lay siege to the Union Army in Chattanooga from positions along Missionary Ridge to the east of the town, from across the valley between Missionary Ridge to Lookout Mountain and on to the um, Lookout Mountain itself. The final battle in the overall campaign for Chattanooga and the final battle of those fought in November of 1863 is that that unfolds along Missionary Ridge, that sharply defined ridge line to the east of Chattanooga, to the east of where we're located right now, uh, along which the Confederates had had their main position throughout late September, October, and November. But not until just 48 hours before the fighting on the ridge itself on November the 25th 
did the Confederates attempt to build fortifications along the actual crest of Missionary Ridge. And therefore, late on the afternoon of November 25th, when Ulysses S. Grant uh, from here at Orchard Knob makes the decision to send Union troops against uh, Missionary Ridge directly east of us here in what he intended as a limited assault against the Confederate rifle pits at the base of the ridge. Those Union soldiers advancing with less than an hour, hour and a half of daylight remaining that day move forward, not very few of them knowing anything about Grant's limited intention for their assault. They move forward and believe that they are simply attacking the Confederates along and on Missionary Ridge. They move forward and find the Confederate works, particularly those on the crest of the ridge, poorly positioned. They find places where Confederate fire cannot cover the, or uh, get to them as they work their way up the side of the ridge. And in a remarkable scene late that day, the Union troops will penetrate the Confederate line along the crest of Missionary Ridge at multiple points almost simultaneously and send the Confederate Army retreating off of Missionary Ridge to the east and back down into Georgia. With that Union success on November the 25th and a brief pursuit on the 26th and 27th, Chattanooga is now firmly in Union hands and it will be turned by the Union Army over uh, that uh, coming winter into a uh, giant supply base uh, similar to our forward operating bases today. And it is from Chattanooga that following spring that William Tecumseh Sherman will take a combined Union Army for a group and advance southward from Chattanooga towards Atlanta and into that uh, South military industrial heartland and disrupt it and uh, destroy much of it and bring the war to a close in the spring of 1865. Observers and participants at the, um, at the time uh, believed that Union success here at Chattanooga um, was a, um, a signal of ultimate Union success in the war. Um, uh, some have said that this was the death knell of the Confederacy. Chattanooga remained in Union hands um, uh, from the, uh, their seizure of it in this campaign for Chattanooga in 1863 on to the end of the, uh, the war. And in part because it was a Union um, base and garrison town in the uh, last year and a half of the war, it allowed uh, a number of individuals uh, from the, uh, the North to come to Chattanooga and begin exploiting the resources that are in this greater Chattanooga region even before the, uh, the war is over. And Chattanooga's industrial um, uh, segment of, of its economy that was beginning to grow just before the Civil War actually gets reinvigorated in the closing months of the war and then will boom in the late 1860s and 1870s. We're located right now at what is known as Orchard Knob, or more specifically, the Orchard Knob Reservation of Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park, one of the several small National Park Service areas that are part of the Missionary Ridge battlefield of the larger um, Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. The veterans will come together and um, get Congress to establish in August of 1890, Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park as the first such um, public area in the United States. Subsequently, the battlefields of Antietam, Shiloh, Gettysburg, and Vicksburg will be created in that first era of preservation and commemoration of the Civil War on the very ground where it occurred. Today, this National Military Park with its units um, at the Chickamauga Battlefield on Lookout Mountain, the small areas preserved here on Missionary Ridge, still tells this story, a vital story in the course of our nation's history, an important part of deciding how the Civil War turned out. You can read about our country's history in, um, in books, but here you can walk some of the very ground where those decisions were made. And even though here on the Chattanooga battlefields today, you're mostly in an urban environment, you can still stand near to where Ulysses S. Grant stood. Look at that profile of Missionary Ridge and understand a little bit about the difficulties that he faced in dealing with the Confederates on that formidable piece of terrain and then 
seeing um, with uh, amaze um, the Union troops charge up that steep slope. You can drive along Crest Road and see the monuments, markers, tablets, and plaques along the crest of Missionary Ridge, marking where the troops were stationed, and marvel at how those Union troops could charge up the steep slopes of Missionary Ridge.